Hello, Dr. Mintz here. I want to go through uh, a case for the GU course. And this is a trauma patient. And I'm just going to give you an overview here of the abdomen and pelvis and get a sense of what's going on. Okay. So, first of all, you see some free interperitoneal fluid, and I've already done a measurement of the density, and it's about 21 Hounsfield units. So, could be diluted hemorrhage, it could be hemoperitoneum, and I, I suppose it probably is. Look at the kidneys. The kidneys are enhancing pretty normally. Okay, uniform enhancement, that's very important in a trauma case. Look at the adrenal glands. Always look at those adrenal glands. There's the right adrenal gland. Where's the left one? They've always got them here, and even if there's agenesis of the one kidney, you will have an, that adrenal gland there, nevertheless. Okay. Now, as we go down, we see uh, things get complicated, and we have this higher attenuation material in the retroperitoneum, obscuring the psoas muscle here. Here's the psoas muscle on that side. And what do you suppose that is? Trauma, it's hemorrhage. Okay, so we have a, a hemorrhage there. Where is it? And that's the main point of this discussion is where is it? Back here we would call it retroperitoneal. All right, retroperitoneal hemorrhage. But when it's in the pelvis, because the peritoneal reflection extends down and curves along the floor of the pelvis, a hemorrhage in the uh, pelvis that's not intraperitoneal is called extraperitoneal. So this is a good example here of an extraperitoneal hemorrhage. Now it can be very hard to distinguish where the abnormality ends and normal anatomy begins. Here's a psoas muscle. It looks bigger on that side, on this side, and I think it's because some of this over here is probably hemorrhage. But if you follow it down, okay, this may still qualify as kind of retroperitoneal hemorrhage, abutting the psoas muscle there, displacing the rectum to the side. But if you get down here, you see it wrapping around. That's because the retroperitoneal reflection, the parietal peritoneal reflection that defines the margin of the, ex of the uh, retroperitoneum is superior to this level. So this is all extraperitoneal hemorrhage. And that's an important term to have. Bladder rupture can, can occur in trauma, in which case it may be intraperitoneal or extraperitoneal bladder rupture. Okay, so here we have a hemorrhage. Fine. So large extraperitoneal bladder, I'm sorry, extraperitoneal pelvic hemorrhage with retroperitoneal extension superiorly. And I think it probably is extending superiorly from this area because this area looks more ominous. What I want you to do to get to the next stage, this is, this is the required kind of level of understanding. But to really make a difference, I would say take a look at the vessels and follow them. Always look for any active extravasation. So if we go up here, we're in the aortic bifurcation. We go down here, left and right common iliac arteries, common iliac artery, and then we see it branch to external and internal iliac arteries. Okay, so that's external iliac, internal iliac artery on the left. What is this? What is that? Now look back. I'll go back up. Common iliac artery on the left. Follow it. It branches there external iliac, and as we go down a little bit, we come into this. This is no vessel. This is active extravasation of contrast, which is to say active bleeding. Now, it could be a pseudoaneurysm that's walled off, but since it's surrounded by hematoma, I think it's a safe assumption it's probably active hemorrhage. Now, we'll go down a little bit farther and up. Oh, Look at this thing right here. What's that? Okay, we'll go above it. See some little vessels here, whatever they are. They're internal iliac branches. And then go down, 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 and we come into this. What's that? That's active hemorrhage also. 
Okay, and you see how looking at this, you might easily just blow right over those and not pay any attention to them. But that's probably more important than the size and extent of the uh, extraperitoneal hemorrhage itself. So important observation here in a trauma case. And this is an inguinal hernia, which seems to contain only fat. And we see this very often. It may be omentum or mesenteric fat that's kind of protruding into this inguinal canal. So it's important to identify it, but also to appreciate that there is no bowel there. And this may have been extruded and pushed out by this extraperitoneal bladder, uh, extraperitoneal hemorrhage, rather. I keep thinking of that other. Okay, so that may have pushed it out. In fact, you can see there's a little stranding in it, and so there is a little hemorrhage extending into it. So we have a large extraperitoneal hemorrhage with two sites of active extravasation, one here and one here.